Hey, good morning Suzuki community over the whole wide world. I've been getting some compliments about, hey, don't forget about us in Australia or Canada. So that's really cool that you guys are contacting me. And before I begin today, uh, I'm going to let you know what we're talking about. Well, you've already seen the title. Um, I just want to rem uh, say thank you because we're almost ready to give away our first cradle. We've had over, I would say, right around a hundred comments in the last couple of weeks because I asked you to do that. So I'm hoping next week we do that video of who's going to win that uh, super cradle for the Suzuki Samurais. So, as you know from the title, we're going to be talking about what kills 16 valves today. And I'm also going to go over a few other things uh, to kind of give you some heads up on troubleshooting. One of the things I want to warn all 16 valve, whether it's in a sidekick tracker, Sunrunner, or a Samurai, I want to talk to you about the pressure regulator. The pressure regulator is an engine killer. You'll see a close-up of this. It has a rubber wall between the fuel and the return line. And of course, it uses vacuum to regulate the pressure. So think about it. If the rubber wall breaks, which it does quite often, where is that fuel going to go? Right down into the vacuum line, right down into cylinder number one. And we've had quite a few 16 valves roll in here with zero compression in cylinder one. Complete wipe out of the rings uh, from overfueling. So it's very simple. You should be doing this once a week. You should be checking the coolant. I'll talk about more uh, coolant problems in a minute. I'll also uh, hit that once a week. You should pop that hood, check the coolant, and check the pressure regulator. How you do that? You just start the engine, you pull off the vacuum line, and if fuel's shooting out of here, you know that you have to replace it. It's super easy to replace it. The problem is, is that there aren't any very good ones. Uh, most of the ones you're going to be buying are going to be from China, unfortunately. Uh, so it's kind of a hit and miss. I'd recommend O'Reilly's over all of the other companies that sell these. Uh, pressure regulators. It's two bolts to take it off, the return line clamp and the vacuum line comes off. So again, if gas is leaking out of it because a rubber wall has been compromised, it's going right into the plenum through the vacuum line. That's a direct line, no valve. Okay, let's go on to another uh, engine killer here. The problem with the 16 valve engines as far as a design flaw is that this is all the water that's in all this whole casting not even a, a cup here. So the way that this sensor works and the way the gauge works on all of these cars, and this also includes your 16 valves in a Samurai, is that if the sensor, which is this sensor here that gives the signal to the cluster, if it's not immersed in coolant, it is going to give you a false reading of cool. It's going to look normal to you and you're going to be smiling going down the road enjoying the scenery just like I did a few years ago when my first 16 valve blew up. I was so happy to have that four door uh, from Eric. We traded a, a real nice uh, truck hauler that I built and he let me have that four door uh, sidekick and I was just really enjoying the Verde Valley like I always do when I drive down 260 coming out to the shop I praise God that I get to live in such a beautiful area and then uh, just about a quarter mile later the smoke the noise the banging the lockup of the engine smoke pouring out I popped the hood it was so hot the engine that the timing cover had melted off all of the spark plug wires melted off when I pulled that engine, I was uh, able to take the head bolts out with my finger that had expanded and shrunk so much from the heat. Uh, needless to say, that was my first of three 16 valves that I cooked. So I learned that I am going to take out the AC shutoff right here above the ECU water temp connector. It's right above that. There's enough meat there for a quarter NPT tap. Go to O'Reilly's and buy their cheap gauge system with the probe and it's got the fitting, one quarter NPT, to run a real water temperature gauge. I think you know by now the 16 valves are notorious for cracking. That is the dead giveaway that the engine was overheated. It will crack between the journal between cylinder 1 and 2. So personally I, I don't even want to deal with 16 valves anymore because of this issue. Uh, they're just getting harder and harder to find and rebuild. 
typically I would say when I gave up on them a couple years ago it was taking me three engines to find a good crank, a good block and a good head because they crack at about 250, 260 they start busting up and so make sure that if you have got a Suzuki 16 valve from 1992 to 1999 that you remove the AC shutoff sensor and you put in a real water temperature analog needle gauge. That is a big engine killer right there. Okay, so that's going to uh, do it for engine killing. Let's just get some basic facts here. When you're working on your car because you've got an issue and the issue is is that I'm trying to maintain 25 miles per hour in gear, whether it's an automatic or a manual, and the car is surging. Hmm, you feel it. Speed up, slow down. This is going to be a TPS. The TPS is located right here on the back of what's called the throttle body. This is not like a normal throttle body with the fuel injector. They call it a throttle body because it's got the butterfly in it. So when you're doing your TPS, you don't have to adjust this until you know it's defective. So if you're taking this all apart, don't take the TPS off. It's got white glue on it. And you're going to see some still pictures that, like usual so I can get you a good close-up. Now here's an issue we found on this engine that uh, was supposedly rebuilt by another company and uh, we're finding a lot of problems with it. I didn't actually want to work on it to be honest with you because uh, we spent a few hours on it and saw a lot of bolts were wrong, hoses were cut, things were broken. Um, I just feel sorry for the guy because he's, there's nobody else that in around that does Suzuki's like I do. Right above the TPS you're going to have your idle bypass screw. There's something horribly wrong with this one because this idle bypass screw is all the way out. It's supposed to be hidden way down in there and there's supposed to be a little rubber plug here. This is the only screw that you can touch. You do not touch the idle screw. They've got a lock nut on it because this is all computer driven so don't change the idle. Don't try to adjust the TPS to make your engine run better and for God's sake please do not pull up this um, idle screw. So we're going to have to go through this particular throttle body and find out why the last shop had to take the idle screw out that far for it to idle properly. Okay, when you're doing your rebuilds on these and this is the same for the TBIs. Now this one of course is the multi-port fuel injection MPFI. Always send your injectors into an injector shop. Don't buy the new Chinese injectors, they're garbage. Take your Japanese injectors, send them out to a shop. You may not know this but there are filters in there and many of them become clogged and they don't spray. You might have three here, one here, nothing here, and you know a normal one. So send them out. All of the injector shops are going to do the same thing. Ultimately Sonic clean them, give you new O-rings, they're going to put in new filters, and here's the big key. They're going to match them. They're going to make sure they spray that mist in all four cylinders exactly the same. Every injector shop does that, so make sure you get your injectors in clean, whether it's a throttle body single injector or whether it's all four. And if you've got a hundred thousand miles on your engine, it's time to get your injectors clean. It will have better mileage, it will be more even. It's one of the biggest problems for the misfire code is dirty injectors because there is no way to fix a misfire code. You just kind of wing it and that's the first thing I do on a misfire code is I send the injectors in and most of the time it uh, will take that code out. Now a lot of you have an issue with an idle and this is where your IAC is, your idle air controller. This idle controller uses a hose to go to the valve cover with the PVC. So this is really important. If you are doing engine work on these Suzuki's and it won't rev correctly, which is like with the timing light, it just goes boom, straight. If you see a timing light where the mark goes backwards and then it revs, more than not, you have got a bad PVC valve in the valve cover right here where my finger is. So make sure when you're doing these you buy a new PCV and the grommet also. They're very, very inexpensive and it saves you a lot of troubleshooting down the road. This is the ISC behind the throttle body. The only way to clean this out is to take off the throttle body. There are two gaskets, small and large, but they're available. 
at O'Reilly's again. And so when you take out the two nuts and the two bolts on the bottom and you pull this out, you're going to see the channels where the water goes through to get to the IAC because the IAC uses water temperature and it uses air to adjust the idle. So if you're having an issue with too high an idle or an erratic idle, it's usually the IAC or the ISC. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much what I want to deal with on the planet. For all of the three wire distributors, so basically I'm talking to all you guys that have got TBIs, um, I'm also talking to especially the 16 valve people. This uh, particular is a very easy to tell. It's a 96, 97, 98. It does not have a coil plug in it in the middle because the coil is inside the distributor. So is the igniter. This is your 7 pin OBD2 distributor. And it has got a big problem for you guys that don't know this. Only Bosch and only Japan has a rotor that goes on one way. If you go buy from Napa, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, and you get some aftermarket, it is going to fit on all three ways and you're going to have a big timing problem. I'm not going to remind you that these are counterclockwise distributors because a lot of people get two and three mixed up because they think a samurai was a clockwise. So make sure if you're having a a rough idling engine that your two and three aren't mixed up. What I wanted to do is um, show you that the rotor when it's put on correctly, and you're going to see this is a incorrect rotor so I can put it on in three different positions, why it's so important to get the Bosch or to know how to use the rotor that fits three different positions. Underneath this plastic cover here you have a igniter switch a little magnetic switch. Think of it as modern points because there's no points in here. So when this is set up correctly and the rotor is pointing at number one, your wand is just going to be entering into the magnetic switch. And we'll also do a close-up picture of how that works when it's pointing at number one. And like all Suzuki pumper motors, there's two top dead centers. The only way to ever stab a distributor with a Suzuki four-cylinder engine is to touch the rockers and find out which ones are loose, um, which ones are tight. And you're going to be checking two cylinders, one and four. So you'll find out that if one is loose, uh, that means four is tight, it's firing number one. Why? Because the rockers are only loose when the valves are closed. All the valves are closed only when it's ready for a spark. It's pretty simple. Anyways, that's going to be a short video for today, but I gave you guys a bunch of information. So I do have a lot of answers for you people with uh, tech support, but it's going to be on my cell phone. Stop using YouTube for tech support, please. I don't have the time to be looking at YouTube every five minutes, but my phone rings every five minutes. And so please use my cell phone. It's okay to do that. And again, thank you so much for commenting on the giveaway of the Super Cradle. Pretty soon we're going to be a YouTube partner because of how well our YouTube is doing and we're going to be start showing you our merch and things like that on YouTube and have links here for t-shirts and other things we're going to do. So anyways, uh, just really want to thank everybody. We did uh, have a pretty decent year this year, better than last year. It's been a tough and business environment and I'm not mad at you guys because you're trying to feed your kids and pay your mortgage and stuff like that with the bite night economics and uh, you know Lord willing this will all be fixed here soon enough uh, with a different president and a different uh, way of looking at things you know the American way the constitutional way so thank you so much for watching my videos again I'm very appreciative and uh, you know be safe go wheeling have fun God bless thank you guys and gals Thank you.